Do you love playing Arena, but don't quite have enough wildcards to build the deck that you want to play? Well, today we have a competitive standard deck that will only cost you four rare wild cards to build. Coming up. Hey, Ron here. Welcome to Time Walk TV, where we play and discuss Magic the Gathering. On this channel, we make gameplay and other Magic related videos focusing on competitive, casual, and budget friendly decks. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Okay, welcome into Arena. Today, we're going to be playing a Red White Feather, the Redeem deck. Most notably, this is going to be the only rare card in our 75 card deck. So Feather the Redeemed is a 3-4 flyer which says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a creature you control, exile that card instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves. If you do, return it to your hand at the beginning of your next end step. So this whole deck has a bunch of pump spells and targeted spells that go along with that theme. Uh, let's just go over them real quick. We have Defiant Strikes which draw cards and pump. We have Grid for Battle. God's Willing gives us protection. We have Sheltering Light to gain a little indestructibility. Uh, we have Reckless Rage to take out opposing creatures. And we have some Shocks for a little burn. Our mainstay, we have Feather the Redeemed. Uh, the creatures are pretty similar to the non-budget version. We have Adanto Vanguard. And we have uh, 10th District Legionnaire. Both really, really solid cards go with Feather very well. Now the two that I've added... To replace some of the rares that are in the deck we have burning prophet which is actually a really good card it's a two drop one three so it does not die to our reckless rage but it also has a prowess aspect of it where it gets plus one plus oh for each non-creature spell played that turn and it also scries so it gets us a little bit deeper in our deck and it goes along with the scry on 10th district legionnaire and god's willing so we have a lot of deck manipulation in this uh in this archetype here so we also have sky knight vanguard this is one that i put in here uh mainly to kind of make a bunch of tokens, maybe go a little wide if they didn't answer early enough. Um, it is kind of underpowered in the fact that it is a one-two, uh, but we're trying to keep it as budget as possible and get as much bang for our buck. So this unchecked will actually make a bunch of attackers and get out of hand pretty quickly. Now, as far as the mana base, I've taken out all the rare lands and I've added in four of the Windscar Crags to gain life. And then additionally added mountains and planes respectively for the sacred founding and cliff off retreats so moving to the sideboard here it is going to be pretty standard sideboard uh, the only change i made is i took out aurelia and gideon which are four cards and added in two angrats and two sentinel totems um, so mainly the angrats are going to be for uh, maybe some of the control decks or the bigger decks that only play one creature like Kefnet or Nicol Bolas or anybody that just plays one single threat, giving your creatures menace uh, mainly be, gives them unblockable. So they'll be able to uh, get enough damage in and end the game quickly. Uh, Sentinel Totem, I don't know how good this card is. I really like the design that you get to scry and it also taps um, just to exile all cards from all graveyards. So we can kind of take care of some of the um, reanimator decks that are starting to pop up or maybe some control decks or Phoenix decks, something like that. That's really where we're going with that. Uh, you know, Dementify, destroy, uh, destroy Target Enchantment's really good. Baffling End's good for the lower end decks. Fry's good for Teferi. Lava Coil for the bigger creatures and Prison Realm uh, as well for the creatures. So that's the deck. Let's go and hop into some games, see how it performs against other uh better decks and you know we'll see how this can uh, compare to any other budget decks that you've been looking at or possibly be the next deck for you to build your collection and get better cards with all your wild cards that you're going to be getting so let's go and hop into the games right now all right here we are for our round one game one we're looking at a pretty solid hand here we have both of our colors we have some interaction and protection and we have our creatures and our main state card feather so i think we're going to keep it if we hit a land we get to play feather on three uh, but right now it looks like we have a really excellent hand so let's go and keep that now one thing to note is that all of our creatures cost two or three so having a top land on one really isn't that big of a deal and gaining life can help in some cases against certain decks 
So we're going to play our Wind Scarred Crag first, and then we're going to play our Plains here. Okay, so it looks like we might be up against Mono Blue. So the main thing I want to avoid is getting Counterspelled or getting like Dive Down, something of their protection. Uh, I think what we'll do, because they have a lot of Flyers, we'll play our Plains and we're going to play Skynar Vanguard. Now this will be good because it, we can block uh, the Paramander and other Flyers because most of their Flyers in Mono Blue are 1-1s. One now if they put a Curious Obsession on this, it's going to be very hard to block because we don't want our, uh, our Vanguard to die. So we're going to say no blocks, they're going to hit us for two and draw a card. So next turn we can actually have both Shock and Reckless Rage up. Now, Reckless Rage does kill our Sky Knight Vanguard, so we kind of want to avoid that. Hmm. Because we can play Feather. I think if we play Feather, I think we're going to win this game as long as they don't bounce this card. Mainly because as we're using Shocks, or as we're using, sorry, the Reckless Rage, we can keep getting it back over and over and kill all their creatures. So um, let's go ahead and swing for two. Now I'm swinging here because they only have one mana open, which means they probably have um, they probably have a spell pierce or they have a dive down. Uh, usually, if they have two mana open, I wouldn't swing just because they would have a uh, Merfolk trickster, and we don't want to get uh, blown up by the Merfolk trickster. So let's go ahead and play our planes and play our feather. So moving forward, a lot of these spells, like God's Willing, Reckless Rage, we can cast them, target feather and then they'll come back to our hand because we're targeting one of our creatures with the spell it also helps that this is a nice roadblock for the peter mander <laughs> it's a funny name i think it's a funny name I really like this card i think uh it's undervalued or underplayed in modern even though modern is a very uh kind of a niche or kind of a linear degrative uh, degenerate uh, what am I saying? Format. Format. I can't think of the word. Format. Okay. Okay, so mono blue. Mono blue. What do we want for mono blue? Well, let's see. I don't think we need sheltering light. And I don't think we need... Do we need the gird for battles? I want to say no for those. We're going to put in two fries. Mm. Fries are good because they can't be countered. So we just toss in one Angrath to kind of get around. Sometimes they go a little wide. Maybe a Baffling End or two. Hmm. God's Willing seems good. Fine Strike seems good. So we're taking out... What are we taking out? We're taking out three target spells... For non-target spells. Hmm. Like, I kind of want Prison Realm. But Baffling End hits everything in their deck, right? So, this might be the best. I don't think they have too many bounce spells. They have, like, Unsummon. I don't think they'll have, like, uh... I can't remember the bounce spell that bounces non life permanence. But let's, uh... Let's drop one God's Willing f so we can get double baffling and then we can kind of take over the game with our creature so let's go ahead and submit and we'll see if we can win game two all right loading up for game number two round one let's see how our hand looks like not too bad we have our creatures spells and we have our colored lands yep i think we'll keep even if it was a six this is a keep, keeper, so we'll just pretend that we have a six card hand because we really want like two lands and then our spells. Oh, it's a red blue. Okay. Um, we can't, unfortunately, we can't uh, shock on turn one, so we're going to have to just play our land, gain a life, and then pass the turn. Uh, uh, now that's the only time that's going to be unfortunate that we don't have like, uh, sorry, uh, 
Sacred Foundry. Man, I cannot think tonight. What are these lands that I keep thinking of and I can't remember? So right now, I think we just... Does this have haste? Holy moly, it has haste. Okay, so I think we just play our Legionnaire and get frisky. I think that's the play. Because they are holding up possibly a shock, possibly a dive down. Okay, an opt. Now, I've never seen a build of mono blue like this that has red in it. So it'll be interesting to see what red cards they actually play that go along with that. So they're, okay, so they're using the red for like lava coils, stuff like that. Okay. Now, I probably should have played Burning Prophet first. Now they are holding up a blue again. Man, this is tough. Um, I think we want to get something on the board before we start trying to interact with them. This way we have a 1-3 that could be much bigger. And we can use our Reckless Rage next turn as well. There's the opt. We're going to scry one and draw a card. Okay, they're still only hitting us for two a turn, so not really big deal that we are uh, getting hit for two. Now, once they get like a Curious Obsession or like a bigger creature out there, then that's when it gets to be a problem. So they're definitely not playing Jins because the blue Jin is based on your basic islands, not necessarily your island count in general. So they have four mana up. So let's try this we're gonna play baffling end and see what they do here we want that to the bottom okay and we'll try to take out the the little salamander guy here so in response to that Let's go ahead and shock the Paramander. Spell Pierce. That's fine. I'm going to put that at the bottom. I'm looking for more like burn or more pump spells. Okay, and then we will play Defiant Strike to draw a card. Merfolk Trickster, huh? Um, I'm going to put that on bottom too. So that's not fun that we lost that guy. This deals 4 damage, so this can do 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oof, that's tough. That's tough right there. That's extra tough because they were able to do that and play it. Oof. I don't know if we're going to win this one. This is not looking good for us. Uh, I think let's pack it in. I, I we, we can't beat this 5-5. Five five. Unfortunate that they had uh, the Spell Pierce in hand there. So what do we want to combat this? So they have burn spell so I think what we'll do is we'll I think we want the gods willings because they have burn spells this kills blue creatures right okay so we want to keep that in everything else seems really good I think we'll cut a baffling end actually we have a removal let's keep our gods willing in there so we want to try to dodge their removal spells because it looks like they're just there's Splashing red strictly for like the lava coils, stuff like that. Not a huge fan, but uh, we'll see what we got here. So we have a pretty crazy looking hand here. So we're going to keep this actually. We have both our colors. Um, we have a bunch of two drop creatures. Let's see what they do. Probably a storm tamer here. Yep. Let's play our Legionnaire, get in there for two. That way next turn, if we draw a land, an untapped land, we can hopefully play another one plus Reckless Rage. Now they may Lava Coil this, which will stink. 
But it doesn't look like it. Let's play another one. Because they probably have a merfolk trickster and they were trying to... They want us to... They let us go to combat. So here comes the merfolk trickster. What is it? Choose target spell or permanent. If it's red, its owner puts it on top or bottom of the library. Put on top. Decline. Interesting choice here. Red or green? I guess all my creatures are red except for Adonto Vanguard. That's not too bad. Looks like we might get Lava Code here with uh, protection backed up. Maybe not. We'll see. So let's swing. Cool. Uh, let's play Sky Knight Vanguard. See if we get a counter spell out of their hand. We might get. Okay. Look out, dispersal. Okay. See, I'm not sure what counter spells they're using because it seems like they're like a mono blue deck, but they just have the red for Lava Coil, which I don't think it's worth the splash, honestly. Entrancing Melody, huh? Land. Drat. Drat, drat, drat. Um, hmm. What do we do here? I don't think I could safely play this because if they have, say, a dive down, that'll get a one counter and, and kind of be for not. So I think we just play another 10th District Legionnaire, hit them for two, and the next turn, hopefully we can hit a land and play Feather, or we can hit a land and go Burning Prophet into Reckless Rage. Another Entrancing Melody. Oh, boy. That hurts. And we cannot do that, so we will play this. Okay, they don't... They do have a loop. You darn them, darn them, darn Okay. Man, that's frustrating. Not a fan of these blue decks. Is, I mean, I love playing blue, don't get me wrong, but man, it just always seems like they got they got the goods every time. Soup. Oh, we let it happen. Very nice. Cool. I was wondering if they were going to uh, counter their Storm Tamer. I guess that's why they let it go. So a white land would be ideal. Uh, not too bad. See if they have a counter spell. Man, they just got it all tonight. Mm. Seems like every card they draw is like perfect for their situation. We could draw a white land, we get feather in play. Then we'll be be good. Um let's try to resolve this one. Okay, cool. Now we have a block for this. Can't block this yet. But I'm okay with that. Yikes! And another lava coil. So they had double entrancing melody, double lookout dispersal, double lava coil. Whew! Man, T talk about a tough, tough deal here. Tell me you have a counter spell. Yep. And we're gonna pack it in because they have the absolute best draw this side of the Mississippi. Whoa, baby! All right, and we are back for round two, match two. Let's take a look at our hand here. We've got a uh, grid for battle shock and double burning profit. I think we will keep this. Uh, we can go burning profit, burning profit, grid for battle, uh, swing for a bunch. So, and we're going to be drawing a card since we're not on the play. So we'll see what our opponent's doing. With this hand, I can also play mountain and pass and hold up shock in case they play something. Looks like they have a Simic Gilgate. Not sure what that means besides possibly Bant Scape Shift because usually the, the gates are with the Scape Shift deck. That's what it looks like. We might see a Field of the Dead or something along those lines. Or not. Never seen a Memorial of Unity. Maybe they just need to get the seven different types. We shall see. In the meantime, we will play our Burning Prophet and pass the turn.
Sorius Gilgate, Elvis Rejuvenator. Yeah, so there's, they're playing this just to uh, get their land types specifically. So we do not have double white for Feather, unfortunately. But we can play a second Prophet. And we can put a one encounter on both. Uh, bottom, we need a white source. Bottom, we need a white source. Three, four, five. They're getting very close to their seven types of lands. If they have a route here plus Field of the Dead, we might be in big trouble. There's six different types of lands. Teferi. That's a very interesting uh, addition to this deck that I have never seen yet. Um, usually their initial game plan is to get Field of the Dead in play and, um, you know, get everything going as far as the zombies are controlled. They don't really waste time with Teferi. So we will see how that works because this card is fantastic. <laughs> and it is rotating in the fall. So we don't have to worry about that one too much longer. So here is our... So let's white white. Hmm. Um, I think we just need to get it in play at this point. So we'll swing there. See what they do. They're hovering their cards there, but um, sure we'll keep the shock. Why not? Okay, so we took care to Teferi. We're in a good spot. We have a shock on top. We have protection in our hand. Let's see if we can make it to our next turn without losing our entire board. Because they might cleansing Nova us here just to wipe the board. They had Teferi, so I believe they're more controlling than the, um, the normal... Sorry, what's it called? The normal uh, scapeshift lists. Okay, so they're going to put that on bottom. There's a blast zone to take care of our... Hmm. Well, this is a little unfortunate. I guess I could have... I guess I could have God's willing um, to get to Feather this turn. But we're a bit far behind. They need they could put one counter on this and then blow it up next turn. There's a field of the dead. We have all basics. I think we're alright. Are they gonna crack this memorial? They might. Alright, there's the crisis. Four six. We are in a bad spot here. Three six. Yep, we know it's on there. We know it's there. So this will take care of their oh no, that only did two damage. <gasps> Scumbly bumbly. Well, I guess I'll save this. Give this pro blue. They have, a, they have five cards in too. Hmm. Pro blue. <laughs> All the scrying. That actually pumped that one up too. That's pretty cool. Hopefully we can draw something cool after feather. But I'm not sure what they're. Okay, so there's the field of the dead. Elvis rejuvenator. Put a land in play. Get another zombie token. Hmm. At least they only have one field of the dead right now. No attacks. We will wait to see what we draw here. Just waiting on the opponent to pass priority. 
Oh, maybe they're going to do the blast zone. Hmm. The question is, do they blast zone on two or three? Because they could put two counters, right? They have one, two, three, four. They could put two counters on it. They're only going to put one. That means they're going to crack it for two. Okay. Yep, there is more Zomboys coming in. A very interesting build of of scape shift um maybe they t took out like the ramp cards like the route and growth mashes and just put in to fairies because everything else um looks like normal uh scape shift or maybe they don't have scape shifts so they were just using to the to fairies that they did have i'm not sure a little let a uh, little suboptimal build but still they replaced powerful cards for powerful cards so it will still work and still function very well so i'm hoping we can take a game off them or, or take the match after after board here i really want this deck to do well i th think it should have some some game So some of our, our spells aren't lining up too well. And we can't flash them back with Arcanus, so that's a little bit of a drawback. But the scrying on this has actually been extremely, extremely nice. This card has been very, very good. But like the original Feather deck, um, the deck doesn't really function too well without its namesake card, Feather the Redeemed. Because there's times with the normal... Uh, feather deck that uh, sometimes it sputters out or it doesn't it kind of doesn't do too well but once you get feather in play you just feel like the deck's 10 times 100 times better now i'm not sure what our opponent's doing specifically because they're hovering over cards but they're not doing anything and letting the time run out i guess they were trying to figure out their math But they only sacked four. And then they didn't get anything. Huh. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what that was. Um, I'm not sure if their build is correct or how they're how they're doing anything. So a um, little unfortunate for them. I think they should have won that game. Uh, not sure how their mana base is built or how their deck's built, so I can't really comment on that too much. I did play a version of Band Scape Shift, and it was very, very good. When you Scape Shift with that many lands, you should be able to get at least two more. You need to get six different types of lands, and then your Field of the Dead will be your seventh uh, land type. So, all right, so. Don't really have much against this deck at all, really. Uh, we could probably bring in Angrath. The minus two is pretty decent. Shocks aren't that great in this matchup. There's nothing really to shock. Um, actually, this could be pretty good against the Krasis. So we will keep Fry and we will keep Angrath so that if they play a big Krasis, we can swing around it with the... With the menace so let's go ahead and submit trying to not make too many changes trying to keep the deck uh coherent and centered around that one main theme uh that's the one thing i'm i am struggling with and i'm trying to learn more learn more about is not over sideboarding because sometimes i'm like oh this card will good and this 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 card is great when in reality all you need to do is take out you know two to five cards max you don't want to dilute your deck with sideboard cards and then your deck doesn't function like it's supposed to or how it was designed to function. So that's something where we can work on together and try to get better at this game, ultimately. Um, right now, since I'm in low bronze, the decks are a little wonky and they're a little different than we're used to be, you were used to seeing. Um, that's, you know, on account that I don't really have too much time to play, but... We still get to play Magic, and we still get to see how this deck operates and how it 
um, you know, wins games or at least does some cool things. With budget decks, sometimes it's not always the most fun deck, but it can get the job done as far as getting some wins here and there because you are missing out on the power that the rares and some of the mythics add to the deck. This deck list is a 5-0 deck list that I kind of trimmed most of the, uh, most of the, or all the rares except for uh, Feather and then added in like Burning Prophet and uh, the Flying 1-2, the Vanguard. Okay, so we have some spells at target when we have Adanto Vanguard. We don't have any red mana right now, which kind of stinks for these two cards, but I think we still keep this because we have a threat with uh, some protection backup. So, and there's our red land. Yay, we did it. We, uh, you know, honestly, we had it the whole time. I don't think, I don't, I, mean, I didn't doubt it, but, you know, we, we just had it. I never know that we didn't have it. Um, we will play, let's play Burning Prophet first. Might not be as much damage as Vanguard, but we can play Vanguard next. And if we draw Feather, we can actually play Feather next, which is super good. Then we can get these things back. So there is the Blast Zone, which can take out my two drops, because all my creatures besides Feather are two drops, so it's a little rough. Hopefully we draw another red source for Angrath. That would be great. Okay, they're going to Elvis Rejuvenator. Put a Guildgate in there. Let's play Vanguard. Leave a white up for Define Strike and Sheltering Light. And we'll swing for one. No blocks. They want to keep the Elvish Rejuvenator around for future turns, possibly. That's cool because next turn we get the Angrath, which is really cool. I feel like this card is a little undervalued and it could have some big impact here. It looks like they're going to get their seven different land types pretty easily. They've built their mana base in such a way that it does work that way. So now they're going to get two different basics. And they do not have a planes in their deck, so... They are still off. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's go ahead and pass. All right, let's play our Angrath. So now they can't block at all. Feather on top, beautiful. Exactly what I wanted for Christmas. All right, let's make it 2-2. Two, two. And we'll swing for five. Unblockable. Nice. And next turn we can, we should be able to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. That'd be really cool. Then we can play Define Strike too. Get it back. Feels good. They're making zombies though. That's not really good for us. But we have Menace. I might block there. Why are you hovering over my zombie, man? Don't worry about my zombie. Don't worry about it. It's just a zombie army. It's not, not a big deal or anything. Just don't worry about it. What do you got in hand? Don't have it to ferry. <laughs> that would really stink. Oh my goodness. Kraysai for six, huh? Interesting. It's pretty good. I think they hold back for blockers. Maybe. Come on, what are we doing here? You're gonna leave Mr. Angrath alone? Leave Angrath alone. He's just, just trying to live his life. Pass and then block? Oh, okay. If I can take out one of his zombies, I'll take out one of his zombies. My turn. Make another zombie. Play Feather. Let's swing with both. 
Yeah. Lock me. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. And then we'll do sheltering light. Bottom, please. We want more spells. Look at that. That has scry one, too. Holy moly. Scrying everywhere. Cool beans. Okay, pass the turn. Put that back to my hand. That's right. Our guys won't have Menace after this. But they have a full grip and a 6-6 six, six Hydra. So it's very hard to beat some of these Mythics, man. Whew, they're super good. Hydra Crisis is fantastic. We are in a pretty good spot to deal some serious damage, though. Pretty good spot. Now they're going to gain a life and get a zombie. Now, they are lacking on green mana, but they still could scape shift for three, six, seven, eight, and get two more Field of the Dead plus six lands. And then, what is it, eight times three, 24, I think? I don't know if that's 24. I'm not good at math. <laughs> it's a lot of zombies. A lot of zombies. Crisis for six again. Yikes. Well, it's not looking good for our hero. Indeed, it is not. Yikes. We have no good spells against this deck. Oh, and they didn't swing. Huh. Well, we have Defiant Strike and Sheltering Light, so... Let's see what we got. Bottom, 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 top, Sounds good to me. And we get our Defiant Strike back. Yeah, I don't think they want to swing and kill this because... And we got Sheltering Light too. Oh, you know, that was the one we got back from here. If they scape shift us, we're really, really dead. Although we should let them f continue uh, and see if they actually get pick lands to come onto the battlefield this time. Looks and feels like a scape shift. Okay, let's see if you know what you're doing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can get the rest of your three and then seven different lands. So ten times four is forty. I'm, I'm super curious why they're not sacking all their lands. Like, yeah, sure, they're doing it 14 times right now. But they could have done it 40 times, I think. Because they were going to go... Yeah, they, they had a... Okay, let's resolve all. The time is pretty low. Yep, Field of the Dead. Go, go, go. Yeah, maybe our deck is just not fast enough. Even without the ramp spells, it seems like they were... Why would you scapeshift again? 
Well, I don't understand what's going on. You don't need to scape shift twice. You could have just scape shift one time and got all of your stuff. Maybe they. I, I, I'm very confused on, on this line of play. I mean, it doesn't matter that the deck is is powerful enough. Yep. Okay, you got it. Yep, we understand. Now, if I was going to be playing this uh, and I was going to want to upgrade it a little bit, I think after that, I think I would want to have Alpine Moons or Blood Suns in the in the board. If you had the if you have the extra rare slots or rare wild cards and you want to play this deck specifically, um, you may need to invest in in the uh, Alpine Moons. Now, to very can bounce it. And they can remove it, but the fact that you could slow them down enough that you can get the job done with your creatures is is probably worth it. Because if they weren't able to make all those zombies, I think we had a pretty good shot at, at killing them there. Um, the ramp plus hydrocrasis is pretty tough to beat as well. So just a little unfortunate, but I think we're just going to run it back, see if we can take game three. We are on the play, so that's really cool. Uh, we won't be on the draw like we were last time. And I think if we have a decent draw, I think we can take him down. We will play. We will mulligan. Uh, we will keep. This looks good. This looks pretty good. We'll put deck of Vanguard. Keep. Now we have both of our colors. I think I'm going to play Sky Knight Vanguard second. I want to start making tokens with it. And then I can play 10th District Legionnaire. That might be a little greedy. They really don't have any creatures until turn 3+. plus. But I'd really like to see how this, uh, how this goes. So let's just play our Sky Knight Vanguard and see what happens. See what happens here. The Hinterland Harbor. They have the untapped green or blue source to play Sim or uh, Growth Spiral. What a great card. Right now we're looking for a white source or a pump spell. Or land. We we could always use some more lands, that's for sure. So we're just waiting on the opponent to uh, either reconnect. Seems like they disconnected again. Or to play a spell. So it looks like we have a Boreal Grazer into Field of the Dead. And then they get a land drop this turn. So gain a life. Alright, so we did not hit our white source. It's unfortunate. Um, let's go ahead and swing. We'll make a 1-1. One -one. Now this does have reach, so they can block either one. It doesn't really matter. We're still getting one point of damage in. Because I made this play, I'm going to go with the Adanto Vanguard. Because next turn I can play this because it has haste. So let's play our land. And I'll play Vanguard. Unfortunate that they have a 1 drop 0 3 in the face of our 1 power uh, creatures. <laughs> but we're going to try to make this work here. Vanguard is very good against uh, the Grazer because it gives itself plus 2 plus 0 when it attacks. So and attack right through that thing. Rejuvenator. So we need a white source or a pump spell. Things are not looking good. They're still at 21 and we're going into turn 4. We drew all of our feathers and not enough lands to play them. Oh boy. We're falling prey to uh, the mana base a little bit. But we do run just 22 lands and we run 11 planes so um we're almost right there so we should we should be seeing more planes than uh than mountains um hypothetically okay that was a good hit um they only have three cards in hand so uh, four cards in hand so we'll see if we can get a little bit lucky here maybe they miss a land drop or maybe they um don't have a great play right now but we'll see. Usually their land, their their decks have you know 27 to 29 lands. 
and a bunch of ramp spells. So and they already hit Field of the Dead. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Not a good game for us to be missing land drops. Uh, most notably, it would be the same if we had all of our rare lands because we'd be missing land drops anyway. Now, I don't know which portion of these would be dual lands or anything like that, so that's something to consider as well. So what we need now is like a grid for battle or something along those lines to to pump either pump up our creatures or something like that. I'm not really sure. We're in a bit of a pickle here. They only have two blockers and we're still making tokens with the Sky Knight Vanguard, which has been actually pretty solid. Okay, so that's a good block so that this keeps their zombie alive and it takes out, does not take out our legionary, which I think is a mistake. This card can have a huge impact once it starts getting counters. This line allows them to keep their zombie and their grazer, but it's also going, they're also going to take a lot. <laughs> so hopefully we can draw like a grid for battle, define strike. Not really sure what else we could really use. An Angraft would be really, really good. Hopefully they don't have a, a ramp spell here. Let's see if they miss on a land. Usually not, but I guess they missed that time. So that tells me they don't have a land in hand. Ooh, that's rough. Okay, they're going to get two zombies now. Two more zombies. Yep, that's fine. Could really use... Good old Defiant Strike, or Grid for Battle, or some, something that would uh, help us along our way here. They have one green left over. They have another Grazer. Ay -ay -ay. Man, it just seems like both opponents, the last uh, two games, they just have uh, everything they would ever want. Goodness. So not good. Not good indeed. We had a head creature every hand and we cannot find any spells to save our lives. 22 land deck and we we first we missed all our lands and now we hit a little clump where we're hitting all our lands. So a uh, little unfortunate. They're still at 11. We, we still have a small chance but that's only if, they're, if their draw is a bit dead. Because lands are good for them. Spells are usually good for them. Another life gain land. Ugh. See how much, uh, how many basics they have left. Yep. Two forests. They should really get a planes in the deck just to make sure they have multiple land types. Ugh. This thing with reach is killing me, man. Whew, man. This is not, not fun. Band deck is really good, even if it's like, hmm, that's pretty good. Hmm, that makes it a little interesting. Huh. So... Let's see. Do this swing. Two, four, six, eight, ten on the back swing. So let's do this first. Let's scry. We need more pump spells, please. Feather, put that back in my hand. Let's get pro black. Put a land in the bottom. And we'll swing like that. So now they can't block with any of their zombies. 
Wow, they let that go through. Whew, boy. That was risky. Oh no, how did that find a stink? Unbelievable. They let they let that go. They don't block anything and they still find a crisis on top. Man, my luck is terrible. Look at the top five. Yeah, that is pretty deep actually. But still, man. Oh, that's just brutal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Man. Yep. Boy, oh boy, that is no good for me. Goodness. Goodness. Let me make another. They have Immortal the Genius. Oh man, I can't say that my my spirits are too high right now. I'm getting completely decimated by this very strange build of Ban uh uh, Field of the Dead. I mean, at this point, I feel like you can build a field. Yeah, his whole, I'm pretty sure his whole mana base is, is budget as you come. He's got the Krasises, he's got the Teferi, stuff like that. For the Mythics that he must have pulled, but, hmm. This is a very weird, weird game. Yikes, man. Like, I want to be happy and having fun, but, <laughs> man, this deck gets rolled over by Bant so hard, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I guess I'll block, I guess. I, I, I honestly don't know what to do, because I'm getting so manhandled, it's ridiculous. Like, maybe Feather isn't good anymore because of the emergence of this Bant Scapeshift deck. Or maybe they need to go into a more aggressive route and um, they need to go in a more aggressive route to, oh, you're kidding me. It went right to this. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, what I was supposed to do is play this on their main, on their second main phase so that on their end step, it comes back to my hand. What the program did is it instantly went right to their uh, end step after attacks which is when I played that card, and now it is stuck in exile until the end of my turn. So there is absolutely no way we can win, and that is very unfortunate, but we need to concede and move on to the next game. So stick around. All right, let's get back to a good frame of mind. Let's recuperate a little bit, try to get back on track. I'm still a believer that this deck is good, or could be good. We've established that it is insanely awful against Bant Scapeshift. Let's just get that out of the way. This deck is not good versus that deck. Even the non-budget version is not good against that deck. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to this game. We have a pretty decent hand. We have our creatures. We have some removal. We're looking good. We're on the play. Things might be looking up a little bit. I'll we'll play our mountain first so to make sure we have shock. And then we'll pass the turn. Looking to make a little redemption run here. Hopefully, we are not against the old boogeyman of Scapeshift. Now, I've moved from the rank queue into a regular play. I think we might be able to get a little bit better, uh, better games in this queue than in the ranked queue. So we'll see what we end up with here. So blue green, maybe blue green flash. Oh, it looks like they're Merfolk. I haven't seen a Merfolk deck in forever. Nice. Um, let's see if we can draw land. No land. I'm going to hold on to the reckless stage because a feather. And we'll get rid of the river sneak. Attack for four. This card is very, very powerful. Very, very good. Now we still have a shock for whatever they else they play. So this card may be very problematic here in the future. 
Let's go and play our Vanguard. That will provide us the most damage as quickly as possible. Alright, we passed the turn. So, yeah, stuck on two lands again. Maybe we need to go up to 23 because we don't have as many dual lands. Or we can essentially put guild gates in instead of having all these basics. Now that'll up the tap land count to four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. <laughs> It'll up the count to eight, which means we might have turn one and two with, with dual lands, but we'll also have all of our colors. So not really sure on which way to go. Maybe go to 23 lands because of the lack of dual lands. But we'll see. Deep Root Waters is going to be a bit of a pain because they keep making 1-1s. One so we'll see if we can overcome that by just hopefully hitting our land drop and playing Feather. Because if we can do that... Oh, man, they do have the one drop. Brutal. Uh, if we do hit the white source, we can play Feather, and then we can every turn start picking off their creatures that way. Okay, they all have summoning sickness at least. A uh, shock, huh? Um, let's swing with swing of both. See what they do. They might just chump chump. That might be the best play. So let's go ahead and kill their guys. I want to play a spell. No, I want to play a creature, I think. Let's play Burning Prophet. That way we have another uh, target for this Reckless Rage. Deeper Waters. Proving to be a bit of a pain. Also... <laughs> Jungle Born Pioneer making another 1-1 one, one. a bit problematic because it is going to pump up the sneak to unbelievable heights and power and toughness. <laughs> okay, so their deck is working pretty good. Fortunately, ours hasn't really worked uh, and hasn't really done its thing uh, both games before this, so hopefully we make a little turnaround here. We should be able to uh, kill a few things here next turn. We gotta let this damage go through. We'll go to 11. Hopefully we draw a red source. Draw a white source. Okay, that's good for a feather. Uh, I think we are on blocking duty right now. Even though we can't block either of their things, but we can set up for next turn to reckless rage something or shock something. Hopefully if we draw... Oh boy... Not looking good for our heroes here. Definitely bringing in the enchantment removal spell, I think. Yikes. Um, let's see. Definitely have to kill that. I hope we draw a red source. Then we can at least take out the sneak and the mistbind. Mistbinder. Take six to five. Not looking too good. Both cannot be blocked. Yes, yeah, swing with that guy. Or that merfolk. Yep, can't do anything about that. Hmm. Red source. Yikes. I believe we are toast here. Hmm. Uh, two, four, and two. That is a white source we do not need. That is a red source we do need. All right, let's say no attacks. And we'll just play another blocker. It's got to block these guys. 
Because we cannot activate this at all. <laughs> or we die to this. Uh, let's see what they got. I think... That does it. Yep. I think we're dead there. Yep. That does it. Darn. We got mana screwed and we lost. Okay. It's a bit unfortunate here. But... We are looking good for going into game two, though. I think we want baffling ends. Fries. Mm. Not sure if we want those. I think we just want baffling ends and shocks, and then we want this to kill their deep root waters. So we can get rid of these creatures. Sheltering light. Uh, Reckless Rage Wind. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of the Baffling. I think we have good removal already. I just want that uh, enchantment removal for the Deep Root Waters. I think we, if we, they didn't have Deep Root Waters, we had a really good shot at winning that game. But I haven't played against Merfolk in so long. I forgot that it's even a deck, to be honest. Um, Man, this hand is... That hand was really bad. This hand, a little bit better. We don't have double white, unfortunately. Because if we draw a feather, then it was not looking too good for us. Let's get rid of one of the vanguards, I think. Because we want to hit all of our land drops. This this deck seems to do really well on three to four lands. Not necessarily two. Um, which is pretty interesting, considering it always runs 22 lands. So I'm not sure the thought process behind that specifically. But, again, I didn't build that portion of the deck that did really well so there definitely was a reason I just don't see it initially so uh, we're just waiting on the opponent to pick if they want to keep their seven go to six uh, they decided on keeping five so let's go ahead and play our land pass all right just waiting on the opponent here we have a reliquary tower well, that's something that was very, very unexpected. We'll play the Burning Prophet because if we Defiant Strike that next turn, we have a better chance of hitting a uh, land drop. Okay, opponent plays Island. Waiting on the opponent still. Uh, I'm not sure what they're trying to think of. Maybe they disconnected. I know that's a pretty common thing. I'll be sitting in the main menu and it'll just disconnect me randomly. Uh, I'm not sure that's my internet or not, but uh, for the most part, let's see. Okay, so Miss Close Herald. Let's define strike first. Try to hit our land drops here. Yep, we'll keep that. We'll draw, and then we'll play this to do four and two. We will put that to the bottom because we do not want another land since we found the one that we wanted. And now we'll draw for turn. Nice. Okay, cool. Let's play our land, gain a life, and we'll attack for four. So Burning Prophet doing a pretty good job there at imitating like a, a Monastery Swift Spear. And what is this card? Has flying as long as you control another Merfolk. It's a Merfolk Wizard. Very nice. So I think we just do Vanguard. And we'll do 10th District Legionnaire. This is a 1-3, so blocking there just kills their creature, doesn't kill ours. So putting the decision on the opponent to choose the block or not. So they're stuck on lands, not doing too much. This time I was able to get all my land drops and you know play my spells, so...
All right, we're just going to swing with our 1-3 and our 3-1. We're really not putting too much pressure on the opponent, so they're still at 15. So there is definitely a chance for them to come back from this. They just need to start hitting land drops to play their spells. <clears throat> Opponents is thinking quite a long, long time on this decision, seeing if they can get rid of their current merfolk and still be in this game. Like if they draw a land, could they play a spell? Kind of mulling over the, this decision pretty hard right now. We will see what they do. Yep, there goes the timer all the way down. Oh, it looks like we're going to be waiting on a timer today. Not very fun. They might have got disconnected. That is a pretty common thing. Definitely going to have to edit over this part specifically. All right, our opponent has chosen not to block let's go ahead and end the turn now we have demsify demi i don't why i don't know how to i do not know how to pronounce this card what do you got opponent if they play deep root waters i'm going to kill it immediately okay they did not Play land. Play Burning Prophet. Alright, let's see what they choose to do here. Probably just let the 4 damage go through. Still trying to figure out what creature they should block, if any. Uh, right now it's just looking at it as 4 damage. But they'll be taking 1 here. I'm going to activate this ability, paying 4 life to make it indestructible. So that we don't lose it by running it into a 2-1. So on to my opponent. They found green mana. So they have Reliquary Tower, Island, and Forest. So now they're going to play Deep Root Elite. Which when, it, when a ne Whenever another Merfolk enters the battlefield, you control put a 1-1 counter on target Merfolk. Very nice. Well, in this case, they have a 1-1, not a 2-1. So now we can swing everybody. Now they have the choice of either blocking the 3 1. Yep, and they'll take 4 in the process. We are still, we are going to pay the 4 life to make sure that that doesn't die. That way we still keep our board presence and force their hand into playing their spells as soon as possible. Okay. Other merfolk you control get plus 1 plus 1. And there's another one, so that will give each of each of the other one <laughs> plus one plus one. So, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and swing. So let's see if they block one of the prophets. I think we got them. That's two, four, six. Yep, I think we got him here. Oh, no, we don't. I'm so dumb. <laughs> oh, what are we doing? Why do I play this game if I don't even read my cards? <laughs> oh, are we, we better get punished for that mistake. We had that game won. Target player shuffles their graveyard into their library. Draw a card. Hey, I didn't know that card existed. That would be sweet, my control deck. For three mana? That's not bad. And you get to draw a card off it too? That's pretty sweet. Okay. 
Good game indeed. Why are my emotes on? I do not enjoy emotes. Disable emotes, please. Burning profit, burning profit, and defines strike. So we get the scry one, scry one, then draw a card. Neg negate. Okay, well, I'll zippity zap you. All right, I'll just put everything to the bottom. Game's already over. Just let me go through the motions here. Okay, we took game two. So what do we change for game three? I don't think we change much of anything, really. Uh, we can probably cut down on these. Uh, baffling end seems like it's pretty worth it. So yeah, we'll do double baffling end. Submit. All right, let's see if we can uh, capitalize on getting another game win and, you know, win the match. I think we can do it. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, feeling a little bit more, uh, I'm feeling a little bit better about this deck now, but I still have my, my doubts, but I still think it's a, it's a good starter deck. It's a good, um, kind of an intro to this kind of style and it is actually power enough that powerful enough that it can win uh, in certain situations against good decks now I'm only swinging into them right now because I don't think they're gonna block when they have a Lord in play so and Lord comes from the word Lord of Atlantis which is another merfolk card that gives your Merfolk plus one plus one or your creatures plus one plus one something along those lines This gives other merfolk you control plus one plus one But it's still buffing your team as you're making tokens or making creatures on the on the Excuse me on the battlefield. So so spells your opponent cast a target of merfolk you control cost two more Ew boy, okay Okie dokie What do we got? I think we played this and then we God's willing up. Let's see what they do when I swing. That's not good enough. Uh yeah, well just God's willing. Make it pro blue. Ooh, I like that card too. Blue. Yep, we'll leave that on top. We're not going to define strike that. And now we're going to play Vanguard. All right, we're not looking too bad right now. We have a shock on top to take care of this. We have uh, God's Willing and Define Strike for targeted either protection or aggression. Let's see what they play next. All right, so the Mist Cloaked Herald is going to be a 2 2. Because of Miss Binder. Another Miss Binder. So that's not good for our little old shock that's on there. But I think our guys are going to be big enough. Yep, no blocks. We're going to go to 16. Definitely not blocking with this deck. So let's go ahead and swing and see what they do. Yep, tough decision here because they have double lord. Anything they play after this gets double pumped. So they either risk taking a bunch of damage uh, to their planeswalker there or they go and try to block these things. So let's go ahead and defy and strike. Let's turn that into a 4-4, four four, I believe. Yes, we will keep that for sure. Yep, next. Alright, we'll kill the Mist Binder. 
We still have our protection up. And we have Reckless Rage in hand. So we're doing pretty good with managing their threats while putting our threats on the board to pressure their life total. So we're in a pretty good spot right now, to be honest. Um, we won't have another red source, but we can kill that and target our own 10th District Legionnaire. Now this is where we might have to give it pro blue. Unless they have like a negate or something along those lines. Then we're kind of out of luck with that with that play. Bounce your guy and draw a card. Okay. Um, yeah, we want to keep that on top. That's great. Yep, we'll keep that on top, and guess what? We're going to draw it. Mm, cancel. Play our land, gain a life, swing for 10. Now, I could have played this and got two more damage in there and put him to three, but we have God's Willing, so we want to make sure we don't get bounced, or uh, we can actually give our creature unblockable next turn as long as they have all one color creatures, because it's protection means it can't be blocked by that specific color so we'll see what they do we're looking pretty good so far we have the defiant strike and we have the god's willing i think we made it i know it might sound like a stretch but we may have just won our first match with the red white feather deck so the opponent is now Slowly timing out. I have less time on my clock than they do. So I, we are in the waiting game once again. Just hanging out, waiting for our opponent to respond or do something uh, in the game. A little unfortunate we have to sit through a rope. Especially with uh, the player having two timeouts specifically but that's what happens sometimes either they get disconnected or they have to leave they can't play anymore uh they have to just get up and go but uh this one looks like it might be a reconnection issue because it's happened a few times but they are mousing over their cards and they're getting ready to play a spell that uh, miss cloaked arrow that we saw earlier and what's the follow-up here i feel like there's a follow-up As long as you control more, return to our creature universe. Okay, so we're gonna give our nice. We want the shock on top. We're gonna give this pro blue, which means blue spells cannot target it. So that just goes right to the graveyard. That's pretty cool. That when you have a merfolk that gets flash. So now we're in a spot where uh, no, we can definitely win. So we'll swing. And they're tapped out. There's nothing they can do. All right. So we are able to get our first win with the old feather deck. That's so awesome. All right. So we had some pretty good games. Uh, some of them not so good. So we're just going to do a little overview here real quick on the deck. How I felt about it. What I think it needs. And where we can go with it moving forward. So... Overall, I thought the deck did pretty well, considering it only is running four rares. Uh, most of the cards in this deck originally, with the normal list, they are all commons and uncommons because of the nature of these pump spells and burn spells. They're usually printed at common and uncommon. The main thing this deck lacked in this version, again, was the rare cards, because uh, like Legion War Boss and the Arcanist, let you flash things back, made a bunch of uh, tokens, stuff like that. A little more powerful cards. Uh, Feather itself is a really, really powerful and fantastic card. Uh, if we could have saw that a little bit more, uh, maybe played it at a little more consistency, I think we would have had better results in those matches. Uh, mainly because um, I think the issue with the Boros deck currently in, in the normal form and in this form is that the deck is very mediocre and doesn't really do too much without this card. This card makes the deck so good 
that it's able to be a competitive standard deck and win a lot of games actually but when you're in a game when you don't have feather that's when things kind of get a little weird and kind of fall off the rails a little bit because you have a lot of underpowered creatures on the ground with a bunch of like pump spells and protection spells now with feather out you know you're getting them back and you're doing uh little loops that you know kind of take the game over um, as for a starter deck i think this deck is fantastic um, it's got the right uh, mix of aggression with a little bit of you know practicing your instant spells and protection and you know pump up your creatures and when to attack when not to attack so there's a lot going on in this deck it's really good for new players and it's also good for returning players to get back into the swing of things uh, and it's very inexpensive like i said these the feather is the only card that is a rare in the entire deck including the sideboard um, just going over the sideboard i think the sideboard is okay where it's at i think it probably needs a bit more removal um, possibly some more targeted spells uh, like maybe you can put more grid for battles in the sideboard or maybe some more sheltering lights um, giving this deck more pump spells I think will make it a little bit better because um, sometimes you get your creatures on board and you're just hitting for one hitting for two you're waiting for the defined strikes and the grid for battles to pump up your creatures and do more damage but you end up drawing like reckless rage and God's willing and they don't have any creatures so they kind of do nothing uh, I think having a little more aggressive slant to it may be a little bit better um, but overall, the deck was great. We had a little bit of an unfortunate uh, run-in with Bandscape Shift. It didn't seem like a winnable matchup at all. That may be changed with putting more rare cards in your sideboard like Alpine Moon. Um, game 1 was very close. I thought we could have won it, but the, they had the uh, perfect set of cards in that blue-red type tempo deck. And the last game there, um, we just kind of took over and beat the Merfolk. So... Um, overall, great deck. I uh, would very much recommend it if you're a new player or if you're uh, free to play with very limited wild cards. I think it's a good deck to build and it can win a lot of matches. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video or just a fan of Magic the Gathering, I post videos on this channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so consider subscribing if you aren't already. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this budget feather deck. Is it something that you would play or you'd recommend to a friend to play if they're just starting out in arena or in paper? Again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And remember, magic is great and so are you. Stay positive and play islands.